Failed prints from running out of filament. Well, in this video, we're gonna use this incredibly cheap switch to fit filament run out detection to your 3D printer. And I even got it to work on the Ender 3 at the same time as BL Touch. If you've been 3D printing for any length of time, you would have had a failed print from running out of filament. When I printed this truck recently for a bridge building competition, it was actually meant to have four carriages, but this one failed because I ran out of filament. My other concern is that I'm printing Max the Megapod. It's got some large parts and when they're in a plate, I don't want the whole thing to fail because I'll run out of filament halfway through. Now out of my existing 3D printers, the Prusa Mark III is the only one that has filament run out detection. It uses a fancy optical sensor, which I found quite unreliable, despite the recent firmware update attempting to address this. In this guide, we're gonna use 3D printed parts and extremely cheap micro switches to enable the same functionality for any other Marlin 3D printer. My first test subject was a Tipo Tornado and that one was quite straightforward. Let me take you through it. Here is the part that we'll be using for this video. There are specific ones for specific printers, but this one is gonna do for now. We're also gonna use an extremely cheap, simple micro switch. Very reliable, very easy to set up. As you can see, I've wired to the two outer pins and now I've got my printed piece and you simply have to push it into place. It doesn't get much simpler than this. There is some fine tuning to do just to make sure everything is going through. The first time here, it wasn't quite activating the switch. So I moved it up a little bit, retested, and I got that satisfying click when the filament goes in and out. Now I decided to use some Capricorn tube here and use a countersinking bit just to open up the outside just a little bit and give it a little 45 degree angle to aid filament going in and out. I cleaned out the center, tested it, and found that it was working quite well. After this, it was time to insert the nuts in the back. Here I'm using M2 hardware as originally intended by the designer, but you can also drill out and use M3 with a lock nut on the outside as well. Time to get our modified PTFE tube and to slide it into place. You wanna be very meticulous with this. Just make sure you double check that nothing is gonna get caught or jammed. And once you've done that, it's time to put on the upper case and then put in the bolts and tighten everything down. It's definitely worthwhile testing one more time. Ease of loading filament will be greatly increased if you snip the tip of your filament on an angle. Run it through back and forth a couple of times just to make sure nothing is getting snagged. And if it is, it's time to take it to the printer. Please ensure your wiring is long enough to reach up to the top of the gantry when the printer is at its highest point. Wiring for the TiVo Tornado mainboard is pretty simple. As it's marked here, you're gonna plug it into Servo 3 and you're gonna use the two outer wires to the two outer wires. And it doesn't matter which one goes into which. That's the physical install, but you might have guessed we need some changes in the firmware. So here's how to do that in Marlin. So here's my TiVo Tornado firmware, and this is Marlin 118. Most of the process is the same for the later versions. So let's dig in. We're gonna do most of our changes in configuration.h as well as some in configuration advanced.h. Let's switch to the advanced tab and then search for M600. This will take us down to the advanced pause feature. And by default, this is a script that is run anytime we run out of filament. So we're gonna uncomment define advanced pause feature. And there's only two things we need to change here to get it to work. Because the Tornado has a Bowden tube, this 100 millimeters here will not be enough. So I'm actually gonna put in 500 millimeters and that should account for the length of the Bowden tube. I'm gonna change this value here, filament change load length to match. Now, alternatively, you can leave this at zero if you prefer to unload manually and reload in small sections. After using both, I probably prefer this way, but the choice is completely up to you. Now we're gonna come back to configuration.h and we're gonna search for max length. So once we find extrude max length, we need to make it slightly bigger than our other value, or as it says, if it's too small, it may prevent loading. So since we've set it to 500, we're gonna change it to 501. Therefore, our 500 we've set for advanced pause is within the limit of the 501 we've set here. Next thing we're gonna search for is park, and we're gonna uncomment this. The values here don't matter too much. So they're gonna be overridden by the M600 code. One more thing to change, we're gonna search for run out. Here we can see that it's commented and therefore everything in here will be ignored. All we need to do is simply uncomment this and we're ready to go. You can actually change and insert whatever G code you want in here and that will activate once it detects that the filament has run out. M600 is what we've already set up and it's quite a good interface so that's what we're gonna run with. If your micro switch was wired differently to what I've shown, toggling this from false to true would be the thing that you would try to change. You can also try uncommenting or commenting end stop pull up fill run out if you're having issues as well. 
One more thing, it's telling us that it's using servo 3 pin. If we switch to pins ramps.h and then search for runout again, it'll see that it's already set up here and that pin 4 matches what's set for the servo. And that pin 4 matches what it told us, servo 3 pin is set as pin 4. If you wanted to change the pin that you were plugging it into, for instance, you wanted to use one of the end stop pins here, let's say we were using Z Max, we would uncomment that and then come back to our runout and change the value to match. But I'm going to undo that because I'm happy with the default pin 4, which is Servo 3. Time to upload. Now before you start wasting time and filament on printing to check this, I would advise connecting via Simplify 3D, Octoprint, Prontoface, any program that has a terminal, and entering in the command M119. This will check the end stop status, and now it will also check the filament status. I'm going to load in some filament, run the same command, and you can see that it says that it's triggered, so we know everything is wired correctly. In theory, everything's working, so let's give it a test run. We're going to run through what we think is a typical use. Let's say the filament has run out. It's going to detect that and it's going to move over to the park position and then it's going to unload that 500 millimeters of length. After that, the LCD is going to sit there beeping. If we don't attend to it fast enough, it's going to safely shut down the heater, press a button to heat it up and then load in the filament and press. Once again, it will push that 500 millimeters through. If it doesn't quite make it, the LCD menu will give you an option to extrude some more. And after you can see it coming out the nozzle, you can pull off the bit with your finger, go to resume print, and then the printer will come back into life, picking up from where it left off. That's the Tebow Tornado done, and it represents the ease in which you can do this mod if you're using a board based on a Ramps 1.4. So onto the Creality Ender 3, and it's a little bit more complicated because of the main board and the smaller 1284p microcontroller. Don't worry, it still can be done even if you're already running a BL Touch and using pin 27. Let me talk you through the changes. So here we are back in Arduino, this time for the Ender 3 and the version I'm using of Marlin is 1.1.9. Now because of the newer version of Marlin, we have an option to set the amount of filament runout sensors. We're just going to leave it at 1 and then we're going to set up everything else like earlier in the video. So that's enabling Park and enabling M600 for advanced pause. After that, we're going to come to pins Melzy Creality. After that, we're going to scroll down until we find fill underscore runout underscore pin. And by default, that's going to be set to minus one, which means disabled. If you're not using a BL Touch, then you can just get a pin 27 board, plug it in in place of the LCD cable, and then plug in the two wires from the switch to the pins on the pin 27 board marked signal and ground. Once again, polarity doesn't matter. If you're doing it this way, simply change the pin to 27 and we're almost done. Now let's assume, like me, you've already got a BL Touch and therefore you're already using pin 27 for that. I present to you the previously unused pin 29 in the board but filled with solder. If you're delicate, you can solder and insert an empty header pin without unplugging anything from the printer. It's pretty tight in there, a lot tighter with the camera in the way, but make sure you don't burn any other wires. The good news is you can now plug it in, splitting the wires from the sensor to the ground from the ICSP programming header that you used to burn the bootloader and the newly created pin 29. Back in Marlin, as you might expect, we need to change it from 27 to 29 and we're almost ready to go. Unfortunately, there's one more step and you need to search for a number of these and disable them if you expect everything to fit on the small 1284p microcontroller that comes with the Creality Ender 3 and the CR10. By disabling the things that you see here with the tick, I got it down to 99% of the available space and that made it compile just fine. On the Tornado, I only did a proof of concept, so here's a proper test print. So here is a very realistic scenario. You're printing a Benchy and a filament ninja comes in and cuts the filament. A few seconds later, it feeds through the extruder, therefore triggering the sensor and using M600 to put it in advanced pause. Now this time I've got it on option two, so I have to manually unload my filament and then I put it through, press the button, and then it feeds itself through bit by bit, about 50 mils at a time. You keep on pressing the button until it finally comes out of the nozzle. And after that, you're ready to resume the print and it should go back exactly where it left off. And I found this actually to be quite accurate. Because it moves to the park position, the split second that it detects the filament has run out, there's very little blobs on the surface, as you can see with the final version of this Benchy here. The change at the bottom from orange to red is what you just saw, but I also accessed the change filament option that now comes up in the menu after adding M600, and that let me change it back to the orange here. Once again, minimal artifacts and a great result. 
Now I know my install leaves a lot to be desired, but this was just a proof of concept and I wanted to show it in the simplest terms so you can follow along at home. If you search Thingiverse, you'll find heaps of different designs similar to this, but specific to certain printers so you can bolt it into place. One thing I would recommend is mounting the filament sensor a fair way from the extruder so you have room to get your hand in and remove the filament manually if that's the option that you've chosen. I'd also like to note that if you go into Marlin and enable the park extruder feature as well as the M600 advanced pause in your LCD menu, the option will appear to change filament mid print. You can do that whenever you want and get those nice multicolor prints like the Benchy I showed you here. That's gonna wrap it up for this one. I was personally thought this was far more involved to fit. So are you in the same boat? Are you now gonna try this? Or have you been using it for ages? Share your experiences in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.